Hey internet, we're here in Clinton, Minnesota at Big Stone Egg Service with Master Pipe Layer Randy over here. You guys seem to like my machinery video so much that we're gonna go through uh, Randy's shop here over at Dibdahl Farms. Check out what these guys are driving around. He's obviously got an impressive line of machinery here. What do you wanna go to first, Randy? I don't know, let's start with the 8RT, I suppose. 8345 RT, so 345 engine horse by their rating, 2015, so it's got def. It's got def in the 4000 process. Do you know how to drive it? Yeah, I've drove it once or twice. Sure, <clears throat> sure. This one pulls a DB80 uh, 30 inch corn planter. Which you guys have fully set up with a lot of precision equipment yeah, on it. Pretty much full setup precision, uh, multi hybrid, the Delta Force, the air trash whippers. Everything? Yep. You got smart firmers on it too. We do. 8335? Yep, uh, 2013. A little bit older. Yep, they both pull 1300 bushel Kinsey grain carts. Run two cart. This one, this thir this 335 has enough power for a 1300 bushel cart? Yeah, yep. Uh, yeah, so generally, you know, it's 1300 bushel, but you haul about a thousand, 60,000 pounds to fill them too. Sure. Um, Your cart must be a little lighter than ours. Our 8360 doesn't like the, uh, doesn't like our well, 1300 very, we run very much. Two carts, so we don't have to run real hard. Oh. Um, you know, so we're not, you know, we're not trying to drive 15 miles an hour with a loaded cart or nothing. That helps. And then this one pulls a 40 foot, 15 inch uh, Kinsey planter. So then you'll plant, beans. you can plant corn or beans with it? We can, but uh, since we bought the 80 foot planter just for beans with the precision, uh, it just stays on beans. And then this one back here? Just does the corn. Just does the corn. And then we can start planting corn and beans at the same time. I should also mention all this equipment just got washed Thursday. Actually they came through and washed everything. Mm -hmm. Typically our shop is not full of equipment. You don't always just have this <laughs> amazing lineup of machinery sitting no, here spotless. Nothing. So you actually do use the equipment? W once in a while, yeah. Sure. I don't know if I believe you or not. Yes. So now, what the heck is this thing right here? This is a 2011 or 12, I think a 12. T8030, uh, roughly 300 horsepower, New Holland. This Pulled the grain cart at one time, and then also one of the Kinsey planters. And now it uh, pulls a land roller, grain vac, and we do actually have a second Kinsey planter yet that we'll throw on it once in a while to help out with soybeans. How do you like the New Holland compared to the Deers? Uh, personally, I'm a deer guy, I guess. Yep. But, uh, uh, not, I mean, good tractors, nothing wrong with them. Yep. For the tiling side, we put a three-point stringer trailer on it, and then we also have a trench closer that we pull behind it for closing up the tile lines. Um, some years we have a drawbar for it for a scraper. We do a semi-mount scraper on it sometimes. So, it, um, but yeah, like this year it kind of sat. Now we're over here. We got a pair of 9560 RTs. What do you generally pull with these? Uh, these both pull 55-foot uh, field cultivators, diggers we call them, in okay. the, you know, in the good states. Uh, and then in the fall, they pull an 870 Ripper, uh, 13 shank, and a... An 870 Ripper, what, what color are those? It's red. Mm. Yeah. And then we have a uh, 30 foot 2410 um, chisel fall that we pull at the other one typically in the fall. They are both 2014s, 9560RTs. Uh, the only difference is one has 30 inch tracks and the other has 36 inch tracks. Do you notice a difference on the 30 versus the 36 inch tracks? I don't know necessarily that we do, but I don't get to spend much time doing tillage, so I don't drive them very much. Uh -huh. uh, we do have this one set up. We have a, a uh, tile plow that will mount on this, a mounted Wayne's, Wayne's Pro tile plow. Okay. And last So just uh, like a three point? Uh, that's got mounts on it. Um, we can walk over there quick. It's, it's actually, it's got mounts bolted on there for it. So the top plate goes up here, the top part is thin, and then it goes in the draw bar down there. And then it... Uh, so then once in a while you'll pull a plow with this? Yep. Because you guys actually have a actually have a plow. We have a, a commercial inner drain yep. Yep, tile plow. So then uh, this one, once in a while we get on a big job, we want to run two plows. Uh, we'll throw it on and pull some four inch piping with it. Sure. Um, but other than that, they're both uh, power shift, which is I think the only thing you can get on them now. And Look at this beauty. Tell me about this 9570RX, Randy. Well, as it stands, I wish it was ours. Um, I wish it was mine too. Yeah, 
This one here we demoed actually right at the end of the season. We were uh, extreme mud this year. So we were literally trying to do tillage in standing water. Mm -hmm. and, uh, um, Why don't you go no-till? That'll save the world, you know? Yeah. So this year we called up uh, um, a dealership we work with, CMB Operations, out of Pipestone. And they ran this 2017 9570RX. Uh, ran it for a day, and as the ground was freezing up and we were breaking chisel pile points off, uh, we quit with it, but it, it worked nice, that mud and water, no issues. It, you'd pull that chisel plow through a lake, I think, if you wanted to do. Did you personally run it? I didn't. <clears throat> did. We were busy tiling, um, so Terry, the, um, the owner, Terry and Todd, the owners, Terry was actually the only one that got, ended up running it. I see they got a sticker in it. Yep. You know what the asking price is on this machine? <clears throat> I don't. Do they have the shield on this one to stop the fire from happening? I could tell you if we did own it, the first thing we would do is they make an extension kit for them um, to widen the tracks out. So they actually oh put, yeah, they actually put an extension. So I believe the tracks come out another foot to give you a foot. So of they give you more clearance in here to keep yeah, the trash away. Yeah. I see this one's got an external, really visible hood latch. Is that common? It is. Cool. Yeah. This has got the new monitor in it. What is it called? I think they're the four thousand processors. Four. It's four thousand something. Yeah. They're, they're really nice. This one's got it, and then that, that 15-8345RT has it. I really like that. Which one? The 8345RT. That oh, that's got the new monitor too? Yeah. No, it's slick. This has also got the standard 1 million gallon fuel cell. All right, let's move on to the, is it a 4940? It's got PTO also. We'll PTO move. also? Yeah. Okay. That's nice. Yeah. All right, 4940, right? 4940, yep. Both of them are, you got 800s on this thing. Yep. With a dry box. So this one gets, this one actually gets a spray boom also. Uh, at the end of the year, when we're done doing the fertilizer, then we, uh, we switch this over to a spray boom and it'll, it's identical machine as that one. And then we switch it over so we also use it as our, uh, for our granulars. So when you switch it over to a sprayer, you're obviously putting smaller tires on it. Yep. Once we're doing the row crop stuff, then we'll throw the smaller tires on it. Why don't you run the 320s? Uh, we're 30 inch rows, we're 15 inch beans. We're not gonna fit down the 15 inch beans anyways. Sure. So, uh, mud for compaction, they're heavy machines. It's nice to have that extra flotation on it. And you got heavy, when I talk about my heavy clay soils, yours are heavier. Yeah, yep. Uh, box, I believe is an eight ton box on it, uh, spinner. And you do custom spreading with this, right? Yep, we do our own and then we also do some custom with it. So you'll run P, K, N? P and K and then urea, yep, yep. Um, different versions. Uh, throws it generally 80, 85 feet on the urea. This really is a cute little shop here, Randy. This one needs vacuuming too. They all need vacuuming. They all do? Not a single one has been cleaned up inside yet. And I'm busy making a video, drinking beer. Otherwise, I'd vacuum your tractors for you. There's a lot going on right now. Yeah. yeah. Randy, I lost my beer. Uh, well, there it is. You got it? I'm in it. Whew, that was a close one. Oh, yeah, I remember putting it there now. This one also has the custom bent steps. Those are custom? Yeah, I don't did know. Did you guys do that yourself? Yeah, we did. Um, I think I probably actually did this one myself. All right, your second sprayer here, another 4940. Another 4940, 2014, um, identical machine. This one, the other one will look just like this one when uh, when the spray boom comes on. You, you, you can't tell the difference between them. What size booms you got on here? 120 foot they both have. The wide one. This one, the only difference, this one does have the direct injection kit. Seen that in there. I didn't see that, but we should take a look at that over here. Yeah, so that's pretty handy. We could put the dry box on this one, but we don't. Uh, it'd be a little bit more with the direct injection kit. So we just have that one is always the one that we switch. You never have two dry boxes going at once. No, no, we only have the one dry box. So you guys had a, um, you had an Eggco uh, interrogator. We had a interrogator. Um, what and, happened to that? Uh, it was in the shop that burned down. Oh, so that's right. When we lost that, we... And you didn't help put that fire out because you were where? 
I was sitting with the Millennial Farmer in Mexico uh, drinking a beer on the beach somewhere. Yeah, I remember that. Yep. Well, anyway, back to your equipment so, here. Uh, yeah, so then when we had to replace that with a spreader, we uh, had kicked around the idea of one sprayer. We, we do quite a bit of spraying between our farm and, and custom, that uh, second sprayer. So the, the John Deere switch and the spreader sprayer is a good match. This one also gets a set of wide drops. So then we, uh, uh, we set wide drops up at 80 foot on this one. Meaning you can run the, uh, the nitrogen so package, the nitrogen split package. rate nitrogen yep. stuff. Uh, drop tubes come down and they Y out in between the rows. And you do a lot of custom with that? Yep. Do you Y drop much or all any of your stuff? We do a little bit of our stuff. Um, like I said, our, our ground is pretty heavy. It, it can use your hand. Spring, spring urea is our program and uh, that seems to work pretty good. We can, so we've got them if we need to add a little bit later. But, uh, uh, but yeah, the custom thing has gotten to be pretty busy with that. Now you got an S690. I know a little bit about this machine. Yes. Uh, you, you got the tracks on it. Yep. Tell me about it, Randy. Um, S690 2012 uh, with all the newer 2012 is about the first year that S series 1213. Yep. Uh, so it's got all the newer updates on it. Um, this one's got the tracks on it. Rear wheel assist. We'll get to a new Holland over there with a different set of tracks and we actually like those tracks better in the mud this year. Over these. Not quite as much footprint on the ground and it's got this stupid big bump up front here and this thing would push a lot of mud. Um, you'd, you'd get to the point where you'd be hitting a wall of mud like here and you, you just couldn't, you didn't have the power to go over it. Then you get the optional uh, full ladder pivot and it's not standard. Um, that's also a custom ladder? That's a custom ladder when you pull them out backwards when you're stuck in three feet of mud. Do you guys generally customize all of your ladders? Uh, when we farm in the mud, the gumbo, yeah, every, our ladders definitely get customized a lot around here. Sure. How, how big is the grain tank on this? Uh, grain takes 400 standard and then we put a 75 bushel mower extension on it. Engine, I think they're like 570 and then I think there's a boost that gets them up to 613, I think. So have you boosted this one? Well, no, the boost comes when you hook up a chopping corn head and then the rest of the boost, I believe, comes when you turn on the auger on the grain tank. So they actually... Oh, it boosts bit. itself as yeah. it needs yeah, it. There's a I gotcha. Bulge. So you're pushing 600 horsepower with this machine. I believe so. Yep, something nice. close to that. I ran a 680 this year from Midwest Machinery. I think it was a 2014. Okay. Similar in here? Pretty similar. Did Same exact have, thing. Theirs was vacuum. Did you have the Lancota Harley bars? I didn't have the Harley pegs like that, but... Uh, They're such a simple, cheap little thing. The Harley bars are... That is nice. You know, what I've noticed though is with my my 16-foot uh, long legs, like the, the Harley bars are too short. My knees get into the steering wheel. We gotta switch seats. You gotta try this. All right. Tell me that's not more comfortable. Well, put the steering wheel down. See, now I gotta take the... Wow, for crying out loud, there's lots of adjustments. Well, I know that. I don't need them though, I just put my feet down here against the windows. Yeah, each to your own, I guess. Harley windshield bars. Yeah. I, I... Although I've heard some bad things about the windshields in these S, S series machines. Uh, you Yours has never fallen off? No, like fallen off or just break? Have you broken a windshield in this? Not in this one, no. No, I've never, Did the bro I've never broken a windshield. Except a for in the gleaner that you lit on fire. That one broke from the fire. I had nothing to do with that. I was yeah. driving it when it started on fire, yes. But the windshield was caused from the fire, yeah. Sure. Now, uh, so what this is, is this? It's yellow. I um, see that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty. You like that blue and yellow? I do like the blue and yellow. Yeah, I do too. So this is a CR9090-2012. So it's a class nine. It is a class nine. Moves a lot of grain. Yep. Is it 600 horsepower? You know, I think it's like 20 horsepower less, which in a combine doesn't really mean a lot. Right. I mean, especially between brands because gearboxes versus, you know, hydraulic pumps versus belts, they all use different. By the time it gets to the tires. Yeah. yeah. So 
Uh, running them in the field, you couldn't tell a difference between the horsepower. Uh, any. This one also has a rear assist. Uh, bigger tires on the rear. Bigger tires on the rear. They both are full of fluid. We actually push 45 foot Macdon drapers with both of them. And then uh, they also both run 16 row uh, Gary Knopf corn heads, 30 inch. So 40 foot corn heads. We do not pick corn at the same time with both of them. Uh, manpower, 40 feet of corn is a lot of corn. Yep. Um, but Especially with it. 300 bushel corn. Yep, this year we had a case, the deer went down, uh, picked up the corner with the yellow one, uh, switched the corner with that one, and then, uh, then we actually had a case where the yellow one went down. Back to deer. Back to deer. Yep. This one, the tracks on these, so Case New Holland are the same, as a lot of you know. Um, so the tracks are actually the same that's on the, the IH combines, and it's the same um, track setup that's on the uh, uh, same style or whatever that's on their quad tracks. So it's a, it's a very proven, tested track. The final drive is built into the track, so these tracks are true frame-mounted track. The final drive comes with it. Yep. This style on this side is a track bolted to the final drive on the combine. So you unbolt the tires, bolt these things. Uh, Deer does build a frame-mounted. Deer doesn't build it, but someone builds it for them, they market it for them. Uh, you can order them factory that way but an actual frame on a track now also. So you can, I, I believe they're at like 25 miles an hour. This one, uh, 18 miles an hour top speed. This one about 21. So it's a little bit quicker. Yep. I gotta climb up in the cab of this thing. I've never been in a, actually, I don't know. Oh, it's Tell been a long should. time since I've been in anything other than a green yeah, combine. This one we run the, uh, we run aftermarket egg leader uh, yield monitoring in this, which is, which is why we have that second insight monitor on there. Visibility is pretty solid in it. Yeah, you know, I think the grain tank is also 400, I believe. And then this one, actually the grain tank, I believe is a little bigger. This one gets up right about to 500. By the time you open it up, yeah. huh. All right, we're done here. That's all they got. We're gonna head over to uh, an ugly sweater party. I see Randy's already got his on. Yes. That's all the cool equipment they got. That's uh, the best we could do. So thanks for watching guys. Uh, you, you didn't say out, man. Millennial Farmer, out. I open the topper so the penguin can sit in the grain tank. What penguin? Penguin? There's no penguin. I don't know what you're talking about.